Good afternoon, participants. This is your host, Satyajit Sen, welcoming you all in today's webinar on reimagining customer experience with AI driven campaigns, brought to you jointly by ET Retail and IBM. So, what is it about the digital experience, order fulfillment, and returns that create so many frustrated customers? Customers today have more choices than ever, and anything short of a seamless retail experience can cost you their loyalty. In this, AI can help break silos and optimize customer experiences by using contextual customer insights and intuitive customer engagement engine. You can reduce the complexity of an omnichannel marketing. Today's webinar will help us learn how you can help your customers have a seamless retail experience. And moving on to the speakers to help us understand this better, we have uh, two stalwarts from the field of AI, uh, Mr. Susank Rao, Director and GIC Retail Industry Leader, IBM Global Business Services, and Mr. Namneet Narula, Head Watson C Customer Engagement, India and South Asia, IBM. So welcoming both gentlemen here. Uh, and before handing it over to them, I would like to inform you all that there will be three poll questions in between the uh, webinar. And we will open the Q&A round after their session is over. However, please feel free to post your questions in between the talk. So before, so now we'll you know, uh, hand it over to Mr. Shashank and help us understand AI better. So Shashank, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Satrajit. Uh, team, welcome and thanks for taking the time. A um, well, couple of notes that I wanted to share with you uh, at the beginning of the session is to look at uh, where are we seeing the opportunity in retail. So we definitely continue to see challenges. We definitely going to see opportunities and we definitely continue to still see a lot of explosion in innovation uh, in the industry. And I've had the good fortune of uh, you know speaking to multiple retailers at World Retail Congress, at National Retail Federation, a lot of retailers in India. And I think one constant uh word that keeps popping up is definitely disruption and uh, so what do we mean by disruption i think where we have seen change typically go through is i think we have seen change that has been incremental in nature so more or less controlled and then we also saw change where it was a multiplication factor in terms of trying to get to scale and uh, i think the change we're seeing now is exponential and i guess that's where we are seeing the challenge in terms of uh, do you keep up how do you manage that uh, growth curve and if you don't manage that growth curve, is there a risk in terms of somebody else uh, taking up that growth curve? So given all that scenario, I think uh, what we're also beginning to see is this disruption is also caused with a lot of uh, technology innovation, uh, which is followed by you know, device proliferation. So we definitely do continue to see a lot of devices getting out in the market, hands of people, and those devices generate a lot of data, uh, very contextual, both internal, external, and across a variety of demographics. And I guess the challenge is in terms of, so what do you do with the data? So we know there is opportunity space and we call it that fourth quadrant of, I don't know what I don't know. And is there opportunity in that fourth quadrant for us to look at and uh, evaluate differentiating features uh, for our brands or for our uh, stores? And I guess the other common thing we definitely keep hearing is, what is truth versus hype, right? So there's so much innovation going on. Uh, do you place your bets on all of them which, on which, uh, trends, do you place your bets? Do you want to be a leader or do you want to be a fast follower? Right, And we kind of see a lot of these conundrums happening across a uh, group of uh, C-level execs. And earlier, we also continue to see that it was very hierarchical in terms of decision making across the business uh, to IT. But we are also beginning to see a uh, lot of the CIOs, CMOs, CFOs, CEOs, security officers, data officers, actually all of them coming together uh, to formulate a strategy in terms of you know how do you really win in the marketplace? And another uh, uh, trend that we have seen is typically we have seen IT function in retail, uh, typically being funded as one to two percent of its overall uh, revenue. We are seeing a, a big shift in terms of going to the four to five percent uh, in terms of spend on IT. And I'll touch in a minute in terms of you know where do we see the spend actually going into. And the other opportunity that we see is with data. So when I speak about data, I think what we are looking at is the volume of data, the velocity of data, and the variety of data. I think the speed at which it comes uh, and the value that it possesses, I think is largely untapped. And we also see that data is basically structured or unstructured. 
and uh, as you go through stores as you go through your digital online channels i think there is data touch points that come up both in physical and digital channels and how do you actually uh, understand data across both the channels to create that experience and lastly i think we are also seeing it's not just data that resides internally within the retail landscape i think we have now unlocked potential with looking at data within the retailers landscape and looking at data outside in the ecosystem be it weather be it social uh, be it logistics be it events be it uh, you know news blogs uh, be it fashion trends uh, to be able to marry a lot of that data with the internal data that the retailers have and then create value out of it and one of the models that we have seen uh, works well uh, is to uh, an appetite for garages so we see that appetite for garages actually cropping up across globally uh, including india in terms of looking at you know how do you create value uh, out of the data space and lastly uh, we were talking about spend in it and uh, typically the 3 to 4% or 4 to 5% that we see across different retailers depending on grocery and uh, uh, apparel or home uh, we are beginning to see a three spend uh, it one is to maintain the hygiene uh, second is in terms of looking at how do i get value very quickly so a lot of my enterprise applications uh, order management systems to create that experience very quickly mobile applications etc and number 3 is we are also seeing an appetite in terms of looking at uh, funding for innovation so what is it that i need to be 3 years down the line uh, what is it that i can disruptively create in my supply chain uh, and unlock benefits so we're also seeing a lot of funding going into uh, it for retail innovation and basically we have seen all of these three being managed separately uh, within the retail it landscape so having said that uh, i wanted to uh, also share with you uh, so what are we seeing globally in the market if i have to kind of go across the globe uh, and then focus in terms of you know how do we see uh, the india retail market reacting to some of these uh, typically if i start from australia we are definitely seeing a lot of you know order management uh, solutions experience uh, propping up largely under invested it now in a uh, model of catching up over the last 2 years and a lot of spend coming up in australia in it and then if i come into asia pack a uh, lot of device proliferation lot of uh, personalization requests so in korea we have uh, worked with an ai personalization engine uh, for lot of customers with respect to sharing uh, chat in korean and then be able to get the customer dna the store dna and the context dna uh, mapped into creating that experience for customers uh, coming into europe we see a lot more uh, it spend in enterprise applications and going left into americas uh, we typically see two trends Uh, one is the big box retailers who i said are looking at the three uh, spend it and then there are the fast followers uh, that we are seeing in terms of saying okay if something clicks in the market have i set up my it organization and product suite to be able to catch up and going down into latin america we typically see that capability and uh, capacity is a problem uh, so typically we see a lot more appetite for subscription based models so let's create the entire uh, e-commerce omni channel experience on a cloud and uh, subscribe to it as a complete stack and then be able to you know uh, uh, go into the market very quickly and maintain it and scale it as required and in middle east we typically uh, do see a lot of investment going globally a very strong brand connects from middle east and uh, we are seeing some of them coming into larger parts of uh, asia pack both both in retail and hospitality zoning into india uh, this is where uh, surprisingly and gladly uh, we are seeing definitely a leap frog in terms of the appetite Uh, for innovation uh, we have examples wherein uh, we are working with customers uh, looking at augmented reality uh, solutions in the store in jewelry space uh, we are looking at uh, you know ai based analysis in terms of store performance product performance uh, we are looking at fashion ai in terms of creating the next uh, trends of design uh, with designers and buyers and merchandisers in a, a retail context and also looking at managing efficiencies in a store so uh, so we see that uh, appetite actually uh, expanding uh, pretty consistently uh, across retail in india and is not limited uh, to a fewer set uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, let's say uh, mid size large size small size companies actually trying to even uh, enter into the market with a differentiated solution and experience so having said that i think uh, i would now like to switch to uh, we spoke about data then if we unlock data but where is it that you will engage with the data and one of the opportunity spaces that we were uh, considering is the generation z and what i mean by generation z is uh, people born between mid 1990s to mid 2000s typically in the uh, 13 to uh, you know 21 year range and uh, we see a big influence in terms of spending that we have seen with many of these people and as 
IBM globally went into a combination of uh, growth markets and uh, you know mature markets, and uh, targeted in terms of you know what does this Generation Z think? And uh, we had a poll across uh, uh, more than fifteen thousand people across globally, and then we also zeroed in on in terms of you know what it means for Gen Z in India. Um, so this is a poll across uh, seventy percent of uh, urban uh, Gen Z population that we looked at. And uh, pretty much a good mix of uh, male and female, and uh, equal split among age groups uh, between 30 to 21. And uh, surprisingly, uh, we heard that you know a strong connection or loyalty to brands. Uh, they feel glad about it. They kind of expect it. Uh, they're not too hung up about it, but they don't mind it, right? And uh, we're also seeing in terms of uh, compared to the rest of the world, the Gen Z in India um, shares more in terms of you know uh, social media. Rating and reviews versus actually uh, responding to surveys, and uh, we also uh, uh, found another area of opportunity where we saw that the Gen Z in India is very uh, open and participative to co-creation uh, with the brands, and then be able to test and uh, launch new products in the brand and be a part of these events. So net net, uh, what we are seeing as a part of the uh, relative comparison to the rest of the world. Uh, we do see Gen Z in India a lot more active, energetic. Uh, would like to participate and co-create with brands. And underlying all this, what is it that uh, we need to look at in terms of uh, getting the retail um, strategy and IT context together, and uh, engaging in context, uh, deep personalization, uh, again controlled personalization. I think uh, definitely. I think we are also looking at an appetite in terms of. Uh, uh, The Gen Z and others would like to control their personalization. So engaging in context, uh, giving the personalization that they want, and removing the friction out of their entire uh, buying experience is what we see from the uh, customer front end. And uh, from the retailer strategy and IT uh, at the back, uh, there is definitely uh, a need in terms of continuing to innovate and experiment uh, with respect to unlocking new opportunities uh, with respect to what they see in terms of data. And of course, last but not the least, I think uh, uh, the whole relationship is based on trust. And with retailers having so much data in their landscape today, uh, trust becomes paramount in terms of you know how you maintain, manage, uh, and be transparent about uh, what you have uh, uh, regarding your uh, customers. So having said that, uh, looking at some of the uh, uh, challenges, context, and opportunities, um, I'll take a pause here and I'll turn it over to Satrajit and then to Navneet uh, to look at. how some of these aspects can be brought to life thank you thank you shank i think this was very really insightful we will open this up for a poll now uh, as you guys can see on your screen screens are you looking for new ways to understand engage and fulfill con- consumer demand and we would like to have your uh, feedback and answers on the same Cool. So we have the answers over here, and uh, so the question. I'll repeat the question. The question was: Are you looking for new ways to understand, engage, and fulfill consumer demand? And we have seventy-one percent of uh, participants saying yes, nine percent saying no, and twenty percent saying in a while. Uh, thank you, participants. Thank you, uh, everyone, for participating. We will now hand it over to uh, Mr. Narmit Narula. uh for sharing his understanding and helping us understand ai better over to you namit thank you satrajit um so let me quickly come up with my slide are you able to see my screen satrajit uh no we can't okay could you pass on me the control to yeah just doing that Done. We can see it. Okay. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Sushant, for a very insightful 15 minutes. And I'm going to leave. Uh, start where Sushant left, guys. Um, data, if that's the currency, and that you believe is what a differentiator or could create a differentiator for you, uh, 
and the nuance that it can create. So let me start where Shashank left. Um, the data growth has fast, far outpaced our ability to consume it. I'm sure you would have seen a lot of those It. And what we believe the brand, which will be able to unlock the value, understand this data, reason it fast, will have a competitive advantage over its peers. Now that's on data, but what's really disrupting uh, the, the retail and the CPG industry? Most of us would agree now customers are driving more and more discussions. They are more empowered than ever. They have more touch points and devices and they're everywhere. And this will keep growing. Leave aside the number of devices. The other thing that you have to play with is the form factor. And I'm not even bringing in variables which, which is catching up fast in the marketplace. What we also see is the digital and physical um, difference or the divide has merged. I, as a consumer, now expect when I walk into your store, you know what was there in my cart and how I how I behave online. And similarly, when I go online, you should know who, uh, what kind of things I've been buying offline. And Sashank touch based on Gen Gen uh, Generation Z. Those guys are even more finicky. And believe it or not, guys they will be influencing more and more decisions uh, and, and will be a key for any retailer to handle. Now last and the most important bit, which I personally believe in, and we somehow believe not touched very often, is the fulfillment service. We believe on one side where our brands are fighting, not fighting, but dealing with the amount of data we're getting generated, newer channels. On the other side, the brand is also fighting commoditization. Whatever product service you come out with, you will have a similar set from someone else very soon. What would differentiate you is your brand promise. And to deliver brand promise, you just cannot leave supply chain on one side. You have to work hand in hand, uh, both starting and engaging with the consumer to making sure the product or the service is received at the right time and as per expectation so that you deliver the brand promise. And this slide sums it. While most of the customers or, or, or brands believe they know their customers pretty well, in fact, 81% of companies say they, they have or are close to having a holistic view of their customers, only 37% of customers say that their favorite retail understands him. Uh, very common, you would have seen the slides in various places, uh, but here is what's changed. There's a massive change on how people are now engaging with retailers. They are leaving more and more footprints and their expectation is that, the, that you know them better every day. And not to say, brands who have the stronger ability to understand the customer journeys will enjoy higher conversion and in a lot of cases, 104% higher conversion rates than others. Now I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes just talking about how retail companies can leverage cognitive capabilities. Now it's not easy, and in the subsequent slide, I'll touch base on the challenges that organization face, but three key areas where we see uh, cognitive technologies or capabilities leveraged the most, of course, the number one is on engaging consumers on uh, on various channels seamlessly and at one is to one level that you know your customer good enough and you're engaging him as in case of me as Navneet Narula and whichever channel I go. Second area which which is interesting, it, a lot of retail companies have used those capabilities to empower their employees since. This, these technology help you make 
more out of your data and pretty quickly. They have been able to build profitable business models, reduce costs. Um, you know, they made sense out of unstructured sources. They leverage weather data, sensor data, social data, and that's how these uh, dynamic superior offerings came into picture for these uh, organizations. And lastly, uh, as I said, profitable business model, agile operations uh, is another area where most of the organizations have used uh, the cognitive technologies. Now, was it easy or is it easy? Answer is no, because AI adoption is still in early stages. Business still see or have challenges on defining the use cases, even what would be the measure, uh, how would they measure the value using AI, or a uh, lot of places we see they lack the necessary skills to uh, define an AI strategy. Now, while those were the challenges, we believe cognitive systems are fundamentally different. And all of us need to understand to make the most out of those technologies. Now, a lot of us would already be aware, these are the key steps, the top cognitive systems first understand. They help you make sense of the data, they read images, they speech to uh, text, they help you uh, reason it after understanding, interpret the information, organize it. So whenever there is a conclusion or whenever there is a decision you make, with those systems, they give you enough reasons to back those. That is stage two. Stage three is while they are doing this, they keep learning as well. And finally, and a lot of our technology has already move to the fourth stage, which it has an ability to interact as a human being uh, in a very natural way. And we will share some examples in the subsequent slide. But I'm just gonna leave you on one stat on the right-hand side, which is on the top, it says 47% of retail executives are not strong in making operation decisions. So that's the important. What if there is a technology which can help you make more sense of more data that you keep gathering, very quickly. I think that that problem, if not would go away, will be solved to an extent. Satari, you want to take the poll uh, question number two? Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Randy. So now we are moving on to the second poll question, and the question reads out, are you looking to adopt AI into your marketing efforts? And we are open to your answers. Sure. Thank you for your answers. So we have, I'm, I'm reading the question again. Are you looking to adopt AI into your marketing efforts? And we have the responses. 64% of participants say yes, 7% say no, and 29% say in a while. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to uh, Mr. Nomnit again. So over to you. Thanks. And uh, guys, uh, I was expecting something similar as a result, where a lot of you would show that keenness on AI because I believe a lot of value, especially to marketing and commerce could be added using cognitive technologies. Now, till now I was just talking about in general cognitive, how retailers, uh, you know, the areas where retailers and uh, e-commerce companies can adopt cognitive solutions. Now from here on, let me talk about what IBM has to offer. So in, ma in IBM's market, and commerce world, AI will help you in three ways. On the top, you see intern, colleague, and advisor. So very basic, there are use cases in which the AI would be helping you as an intern, which means it will help you answer some meaningful questions. In the subsequent slide, I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work or how it works. It's in the slide, uh, but uh, once you reach out, if, you sh if you're keen, I can show you uh, how uh, show you the system live, but 
in turn is just helping you answer meaningful questions uh, about your customer. You know, the simple answer could question could be, uh, Watson, can you tell me which was the last campaign in which I used the word popcorn? And it will go through the history of the entire, uh, all the campaigns that you run till date in the system, and it will figure out the campaign or uh, emailer where you use that word. So pretty strong, pretty meaningful. In a lot of pl pl uh, places, it will uh, the AI in our in what in in Watson marketing and commerce it will help you as a colleague, which means it will help you alert and advise. In alert, simple thing uh, could be uh, a customer is facing a challenge when he is going on your website. So in your registration page, there is on a specific field a lot of abandonment or people are struggling and not going beyond that field. Uh, it could also be an anomaly detection. A particular um, uh, skew which does very well every day is not doing that great today. It can bring that up. Or uh, a particular item which generally sells 100 quantity a day, today is seeing more than 3,000 orders. It can come up uh, to see if everything is okay. Uh, it can advise you, it can recommend, um, and the best possible scenario, not a scenario, but a use case is, uh, and again, I will show you in the subsequent slide, um, where it can tell you what a typical uh, segment, what kind of a journey we should be pushing them to. Should we be pushing them to go and research online and then push them to store, or shall we give them an offer to redeem directly on store? The system analyzes and then advises you on that particular segment what has worked historically and what you should do. It, you will see also see it as working as an advisor where it will automate a lot of your tasks and at the same time adapt, continuously evaluate the impact, effectiveness of the answers uh, it will do uh, over a period of time. So that's how the AI helps our marketing and commerce customers and these AI is embedded in all our offerings. So with Watson, you have an AI platform for business and for you, as, uh, for you, the professional. And what I mean there for you, the professional, and I want to emphasize that, not only it helps you make smarter decisions, it helps you make those smarter decisions after looking through a lot of data, which is humanly impossible, and in very less time. So that's what a cognitive uh, marketing platform can do for you. And importantly, give you some more time or some additional time to spend with your family as it will do a lot of heavy lifting for you. On, on, the, in, on the business side, um, it's been there in 45 countries in 20 different industries. So it, uh, Watson understands uh, you know, the language, the nuance of a specific industry, so it can relate better. I have touched base a bit, but this is the Watson customer engagement platform. In, in one of the slides, I made a point of brand promise, and I believe to deliver a brand promise, everything needs to be connected, marketing, commerce, and supply chain. So for marketing professional, it will give you better um, um, depth to know your customer, deepening deep in engagement and increased conversion by capitalizing on the right uh, data to fine tune and personalize offer or for commerce um, it will help you deliver the omni channel um, uh, execution with deep insight so and I will cover that uh, in few of the slides later uh, on 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 what we bring on to the table and what AI capabilities are infused in, in our commerce and supply chain is key, as I said, to deliver a brand promise, you cannot ignore the supply chain. So which warehouse it should be, uh, the order should be routed to. Uh, is there a problem in specific area from where you source uh, your raw material from? All of that capability is there in, in our uh, supply chain and all of these three connected together, working as one to deliver a superior engagement. Um, I'll spend a couple of minutes 
on this particular chart. I know it's a busy slide, but that's the overall portfolio that IBM has. So from personalized marketing to customer insights, we have omni-channel commerce as well as order management and fulfillment and on supply chain, the supply chain optimization and B2B collaboration. I just want to highlight three quick facts. Most of them can be delivered either on premise or on private cloud or on public cloud. Our public cloud for few of our offerings, the data center is in India. So that's already taken care of. And final, a lot of all of these applications have AI infused in it. Machine learning is already there. Um, and they're pretty powerful offerings. I'll give an example. For example, customer insight. A lot of you would already be working with some uh, other marketing players on, on answering a question, what? What is happening on my website? Now, interestingly, is answering what good enough? What marketers today need to know, why is that happening? So when we talk about our offerings through the AI that we've infused in our offerings, we are able to answer that why and send it to the marketer to act on that why. Uh, and as I said, personalized marketing, digital experience, customer insight, commerce, OMS, all can be delivered and consume the way you want, either on premise or on, on cloud. Now let me pick up the marketing first. So what with Watson marketing marketers can do? I'll not read all those particular uh, key points. Uh, what I'm gonna highlight on three or four quick aspects. You can use location information and send highly targeted messages in real time. Now you can do that with some other technologies as well, but in our case, the and I will cover, you will have some more details in subsequent slide, but in our case, not only is uh, geofencing, but we also know that at that particular, day, particular time with certain level of certainty, uh, whether you're at work or whether that's your home. So you can target individually, individual better. You can also, take an advantage of weather location. Some of our customers do that. Depending on the weather, you might wanna send an offer in a particular city uh, on, at that point in time. So that's a possibility. Um, create more relevant and timely offer using weather information. Is that what I meant? Uh, using that weather information? Know which of my customers are likely to unsubscribe before they do it. And I'm not talking about reporting. I'm talking about analytics, I'm talking about running churn models in cloud if you want to, and then creating a segment. So we believe it's pretty unique till you're using uh, a specialized analytical offerings. Uh, it's, it's hard to uh, get in, a out, in, in, in an out of box marketing uh, application provider. They generally don't have this. Um, now let me take you through a few of these uh, capabilities that I spoke about. This is the one where I said it will help you as an intern. We believe Watson Assistant will change the way people interact with technology. You can ask any question to Watson Assistant and it will come back with the answer. Look simple, but think about this. Uh, our industry which has not very high, but fairly high attrition. And when you have a new uh, intern or a colleague joining you, how easy it would be for him to engage if you have something like this. So we have seen the the ramp up time going low and uh, very less when there are new hires. Also, it saves a lot of your time. And believe it or not, guys, it can also tell you a joke. Which, which, which was interesting when, when I came, when uh, my team told me that. Uh, some of the questions that it can answer, what's an, what customer segment responds better to this particular content, uh, what's an execute the campaign on email, SMS, and push using customer specific channel preferences. That all is possible using what's an assistant. So we believe 
it is it is a big game changer the way people will interact with technology journey analysis again an interesting one a particular segment uh historically if we see the conversion is higher when he was sent an offer and asked to redeem that offer online the system itself will suggest that you on this segment should be uh leveraging or should be pushing them to do this it will also give you much more detailed uh, insight on how much time was spent on a particular channel what was the duration what was an average revenue out of that particular journey you got out of uh you got out of and how many unique customers took that journey so very interesting and i believe it's 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 it will be it's it's a strong tool for the marketers to play with yeah, i'll drill it down further it also does mindset analysis in which means uh, what it means is it can tell you in what particular stage a specific customer or a consumer or a prospect is now that's interesting but i'll make it more interesting you can then pick up that particular segment and send him an offer if you see is not moving for a while so you can pick that segment send it an offer so that you can move him to the next next uh, uh cycle or next uh, cognitive tagging uh, as the name suggests you can upload content and the system will be intelligent enough to tag you a lot of this take a lot of your time of your resources and here's where technology can quickly help you save that time and that resource could be put to more meaningful work struggle detection as i touched base on this earlier a um, lot of examples um, and i'm not going to brand name the brands but places in one of the cases i went to one of the sites it to for me to go to the next page they wanted my name my 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 email id as well as my location when i went to the location instead of bengaluru i was typing bangalore it did not allow me to go to the next page and i'm sure a lot of people would have been doing that if not uh if they would have been using our technology this could have been detected uh with multiple form factors coming in um that can also create interesting challenges i've seen in some places and um, a particular form not opening well and you cannot submit uh what you have filled in because you don't see that field so that kind of struggles can be detected can be put forward to the marketers or to the it team to solve rule advises on near real time basis uh you can you can change uh the content that i would see on an inbound channel uh um, interestingly a lot of technologies can do it but as a vision it will be uh not only executing the rules that you have written over a period of time when you have trained watson smart enough it will also have an ability to apply their rules helping you convert better personal location i've already spoken about it we pretty much know in certainty that whether uh uh ex individual is at home at work uh and you can then create um the offers depending on uh the segment three of the basic things that's an important tick box uh yes uh whatsapp marketing uh is is multi channel it has email sms push social uh it also uh is very strong on mobile messaging side push sms and even on 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 the variables uh on social advertising we already cater or you can do that advertising on facebook on google on on twitter but also we have in roadmap the snapchat interest and inbox so clearly the gen gen z should be happy on group messaging uh web, what's available right now is wechat and line uh and there is a lot of interest in the marketplace on whatsapp so that's coming up shortly which will be tightly integrated uh as a channel in our marketing offering and all of it uh is gdpr compliant which is which is key uh 
So then you want to take to the next poll question? Yes, Nandin, of course. Uh, so we have the next poll question, and it reads, how many marketing emails do you send in a month? And you have the options. We are waiting for your answers. Great, so we have the answers coming in. The question was how many marketing emails do you send in a month? And 53% uh, of people said less than 1,000. 29% of participants said 1,000 to uh, 1 lakh. 12% of people said 1 lakh to 1 million and 6% uh, voted for more than a million. Thank you for your responses and back to Nomneet again. Thank you. Interesting, guys. So definitely email is the most ROI generating channel, so a lot can be achieved. But we know our country, or at least our part of the world, uh, we are a spamming economy. But just to highlight a couple of things, um, what we do differently and where AI and machine learning kicks in. Um, I gave you an example where in our cloud offering, in a public cloud offering, uh, Watson campaign automation. Not only you can create segments, but also use analytics to create models. So that will help you create, uh, right now we have three or four models out of the box and we will keep building on it. For example, churn, uh, that will give you a lower segment size, but you will be targeting them better and you will be uh, having a higher response rate, so to say. And why I say that is once your model is ready, there are two or three things do you do. Then you go to content. Now, with machine learning, uh, in my technology, there's an ability where it can guide you whether it's following the best practices, that content that you have created or not. It will tell you whether there is a possibility of it landing in the inbox or not. So that is the second part. And the third and an important one is, now once it lands in an inbox, what decides whether I'm gonna open it, open an email? It is, it is the subject line. Now, it's both art and science, where you bring in your art, and with machine learning, it can, depending on the segment, give you a sentiment analysis of that subject line. And it will also tell you what could be a possible subject line, which can help you have more open rates. And finally, the last part is, I, I don't see people going to the page two or a page three on their, on their personal email IDs. I mean, I believe not many will do that. Uh, and what that means is, the email should land at an inbox at a time when I, if I'm the recipient, open my email uh, uh, in those timelines. So let me rephrase, sorry. Um, the email one sent, the system has, will read at typically what time I open my emails. And on basis of that algorithm, it will suggest a time at which, my at, at what times that email should land in my inbox which would mean is it will be in first three, four, five uh, emails uh, in my inbox when you use uh, Watson custom automation as a technology. So recapping, building models, machine learning, helping you to create subject line, validate if the email template is good enough to be inboxed. And finally, uh, the algorithms helping you to send an email at a time typically when your consumer would open uh, the email. Right, so um, I'm going to leave some time for uh, question and answers. I'm not going to spend more than two minutes on next five slides, but we have a very strong offering of commerce. 
um, and what with Watson, how we differentiate is we can alert you in situations that may need your attention before they become a problem. Uh, we have had customers where uh, where a item was priced incorrectly. All at, all of a sudden, they saw those order going multiple times, and when they looked at it, they came to know that the pricing on that item was incorrect, and that's why it got ordered so many times in, in such a less time. Uh, it identified uh, demand patterns and optimized inventory allocation to minimize the stockouts. Um, it will get you a go. It will give you a, a head start on uh, on on the pricing as well with dynamic pricing, and I'm going to touch that touch, touch base on that in subsequent slides. Let me start by inside assistance. With Watson, you receive notifications, and I gave you an example where the item was not priced correctly and got ordered so many times. It got highlighted, was flagged to the team, and they corrected it. So a very interesting uh, aspect uh, and a feature uh, which inside assistance can help you with. Intelligent pricing, which is interesting, it can crawl across platforms and then give you a view and price your offering in and around the competition price. So with Watson, you can respond in real time to change in competitive price and market fluctuation pricing intelligence that recommended the optimal pricing action. So that's that's very interesting uh, feature. Search inside, you can make it easy for your customers to find what they're looking for, uh, understand the intent, uh, natural la language processing, so I can type a gown that I can wear in the night, the system will pick that up and throw the results, or a red gown, or a, uh, you know, I can just specify colors and it will pick that up. It can also link my persona and uh, attribute and then bring up the offering. Order optimization, you can achieve a 9% reduction on cost per order. That's what our customers have seen, uh, and increase customer satisfaction. Uh, the last one I'm going to touch base on, and I'll skip a few slides after that, is cognitive sequencing. Uh, you can increase the merchandiser effectiveness and productivity by reducing the time spent. Uh, you can give them the rules on which the system will automatically sequence uh, the the products uh, that that's gonna get uh, that's gonna be positioned. So let me summarize with Watson customer engagement. What all can be achieved? So I've already spoken about the transformation. Uh, you can spot trends in nanosecond. Discover opportunities and capitalize on new markets because a lot of heavy lifting can be done by the uh, by Watson in our application, drive collaboration quickly, capture opportunities, and as I said, to deliver pro uh, a brand promise, a lot of hard work can be done by the machine and a lot of smart work human can bring in uh, there. So differentiate with the AI capabilities, and this will be my last slide uh, for you guys. Back to you, Satyajit. Thank you, Ramit. Uh, I think it was really, really uh, insightful. Uh, I'll, I'll request uh, Shashank as well to join in as we take uh, questions from our participants. Great, so we have both of them. Uh, so we have the uh, first question already coming in, and we have Mr. Vivek Patel asking us, how exactly do you uh, do mindset analysis? This is not subject to anybody, so either of you can respond. Sorry, can't hear you, Namneet. We can't hear you, Namneet. Can't hear you. Can't hear you, Navneet. Sorry. Navneet, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oops. Sorry, I was speaking on mute. <laughs> uh, Sadish, sure. uh, can I can I get the name of the gentleman who asked the question? Uh, 
Yeah, Mr. Vivek Patel asking us, how exactly do you do mindset analysis? Sure. Hi, Vivek. So, Vivek, it, it's set in the system. Um, it's harder for me to explain uh, right now, but if you want, and if you can have your details, we will be happy to show you. But it's configured in the system, those journeys, and then at any point in time, the machine analyzes at what particular stage that particular customer is, and that's how uh, it's done. But if I can get your details, I will actually get it demonstrated to you. Uh, sure, thanks, Amit. Anything, uh, Shashank, you would like to add here? All right, so moving on to the next question. Uh, I think, you know, Namneet uh, and we can connect offline and uh, take the discussions forward. Moving on to the next question. Uh, we have Mr. Pankaj Bansal asking us, what data sources do you use to be able to understand the customer and build a customer's persona? Again, open to both of you. So uh, let, let me answer it from, uh, so there are two, three things, right? Um, with the ability in our technology, both structured and unstructured, we can relate it well with the probabilistic and deterministic matching, uh, the, the attributes keep increasing. So we try to get as much information as we can, a lot from uni unifying, all the data sources that you have, which will be owned by you, and add to that uh, the uh, anything that we collect over over the social channels, as well as uh, uh, you know third-party data sets. So sure. thanks, Amit. Uh, moving on, we have a lot of questions coming in. So Ms. Ruchi Mathur is asking us: Is there any data which gives the view of the success of AI adoption? in core B2B industries, especially uh, dealing with niche manufacturing technology. And uh, I need to know more on this question. Sashank, would you like to take a shot at Because I didn't really uh, understand. Uh, I think I need to understand the question yeah. a little better. Could you just repeat that again, uh, Sure, sure, sure. So basically the question is uh, around, is there any data uh, which gives a view of the success of AI adoption in B2B industries, especially in manufacturing sector, manufacturing technology. Hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe not a very direct answer, but I think where we have seen is uh, typically in the logistics and supply chain. Uh, I think we really looked at in terms of uh, internal data and external influencing data, right? And then be able to understand uh, both parts of that scenario to be able to get a or unlock some of the efficiencies in supply chain. So that was one. Uh, second is uh, we've also seen AI, especially when it uh, comes to a lot of the promotions uh, that are done between the CPG companies and into the retail landscape. And a lot of the audits are done after that. Uh, the spend in audits is uh, huge. And it comes, uh, and the value that uh, you know an auditor unlocks is by going through a lot of the unstructured data and sampling of data. Uh, so we've used AI to look at in terms of uh, the unstructured data go through the entire volume of data and not just a sample subset and uh, the amount you can uh, unlock uh, varies very hugely uh, depending on you know product to product or you know a cpg relationship and uh, we found some success in those auditor use cases where we have used ai yeah and and uh, just to add on yeah. that commerce and marketing as well we see a huge adoption a lot of customers but if you can uh, where i'm getting confused is suchi is after just uh, you know the influence or the numbers that I don't know, but definitely a lot of use cases that we see that we are delivering on today with our customers. Great, thanks, thanks, Namdeep, thanks, Ram. Uh, moving on, so uh, we have a question from Mr. Chandan, and he's asking us to highlight some su more success stories, uh, especially with, uh, those which are making supply chain easy. Also. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, Shazang, you, want, you, you go ahead if you want. Yeah, so I think uh, one of the areas that we have seen is uh, forecasting is always a problem uh, and a big challenge. And especially if we uh, go narrower into the grocery industry, I think we have seen use cases where we have been successful working with clients uh, to be able to get to a more intelligent demand forecasting and a combination of uh, you know uh, the context of the store, uh, context of the demographics, uh, context of the events. 
uh, and then be able and of course a lot of the historical data that the retailer already has and then be able to narrow it down uh, to an SKU level of demand forecasting right uh, and increase the accuracy of uh, you know uh, inventory that you have placed in store so we've seen some use cases there uh, where uh, we worked it out through AI Nani? Yeah, from thanks, Sanchez. And for me, I mean, from very basic use case of, uh, you know, which warehouse should we shipping a particular order from, to from where we source, to more complex use cases where uh, we were able to identify that there will be a storm in specific area from you where, from where a specific brand source a lot of their raw material from, and they can expect delay. So. Uh, supply chain is a very big area. Uh, we do a lot with a lot of big organizations. Um, and I'll be happy to take this discussion uh, with Chandan if he can get his email ID and I'll have an expert speak to him. Uh, but yeah, as I said, from very simple use cases to a whole lot complex use cases can be delivered out of box. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Nitin. We'll request uh, Mr. Nitin to get in touch with you guys and you know uh, take the discussion forward. Uh, we have a, in, in, another interesting question coming up from Mr. Pankaj, Mr. Pankaj Verma, and he's asking how to solve the lack of data issue in customer retargeting campaign, especially when uh, you know the campaign is shot by AI platform. Right. So uh, let me let me answer it in two ways. The lack of data when you say uh, there could be multiple reasons for it as i said uh, when the technology is doing a, heavy, a lot of heavy lifting uh, the small footprints that today you are not able to identify and allocate to a persona gets added or allocated that's number one number two um, in in other ways uh, we use various third party uh, if need be attributes as well to target uh the customers so that can be done and finally uh, as i said um uh, we believe getting uh, adding attributes to your customers is an ongoing process you shouldn't miss an opportunity to know more about your customers and if you have a technology which can keep pro progressively profiling you uh you will over a period of time have enough and more attributes but to his question, the immediate answer is I can use third party as well as since a lot of it uh, using a technology I can attribute deterministically or probabilistically that this footprint left is of enough need. Uh, I can better the uh, targeting because I know a bit more about enough need than you would have known without any technology. Thanks, Amit. Uh, another interesting question coming up from Mr. Rahul, uh, who is asking us, uh, so how does AI incorporate occasion-based data uh, on customer phenomena, especially uh, in the two-wheeler segment, you know, two-wheeler auto car segment? Sure. So in my case, and Shashank can give you a broader answer, in my case, uh, yeah, the location base is through an SDK. So if we are using our uh, Watson campaign automation technology and they're using our push channel, uh, there's an SDK that goes in and through SDK we capture those signals. Yeah, and I just want to add to that. I think um, we've also worked in terms of looking at uh, getting the DNA of a customer, getting the DNA of a store, getting a DNA of the product. Right, and then be able to contextualize uh, based on location-based mapping uh, to bring that entire three contexts together uh, to be able to drive deeper personalization. Sure, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, there is a question from Sanjay Sharma who is asking us, uh, how can Watson identify hot lead slash prospects for companies running on B2B platforms? Uh, I, I missed the first name. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, Sanjay Sharma. Mr. Sanjay. Okay. Yeah. So Sanjay, we uh, uh, we have the lead scoring model in built in our technology. So aside the heavy lifting of data, um, we can we can score a particular lead and then channel it at a right point in time uh, to the channel uh, which is more uh, apt to 
to answer that query. So for example, uh, let's take a case for IBM. Uh, if, if Sanjay goes on to our website, leaves, leaves his footprint, bases his uh, designation as well as the organization, we score them. And how many times he visit our various um, uh, properties, we score him on, him, on, him on engagement as well. So whenever there is a uh, right uh, score, we either pass it to our inside sales, depending on where the account lies, or the field sales, uh, if it's with them, and at what level. So for example, uh, you know, uh, if it is in my top target list, I can even have a, this lead routed to a senior guy so that we don't waste time qualifying uh, because the lead score is uh, high. So lead scoring is the way we do it. Sure, thanks, thanks, Namit. Uh, we are getting a lot of questions, but we just have time for a couple of couple of more, uh, couple couple more of them. Uh, for the others, we will request them to uh, get in touch with uh, Namit and uh, Sark offline. So, if you so, can on that chat also share our email ID so that we make sure we are capturing them, or if you can they get theirs and pass on to us so that we'll be uh, responding to their questions. Sure, we'll we'll pass on your contacts and you know uh, uh, your delegate to delegates and to info. Right. So you know, move on to the next question. You know, uh, from Mr. Krishna Prasad Mishra, uh, he's asking us velocity, variety, and volume. Which is the more dynamic form of uh, from the AI point of view in the Indian context? Yeah, in the India context, I would probably say uh, the velocity. Uh, I think the amount of uh, demographics that we uh, interact with, uh, the speed at which, uh, I think it's not one function against the other, but I think uh, the bigger challenge, if I have to na nail it down to all the three, I think the velocity with which data comes in, right? And especially with a market base of, you know, uh, more than a billion population uh, in India, uh, I think if you are able to reach out to a larger mass and if, if you're more a mass retailer versus a very uh, category specific retailer, uh, the answer would vary. But I would say if I have to generalize, I would believe uh, it's the velocity of data. So you need to make value out of it before you know it loses its context. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. And we have the time for just one question. And uh, the question is from Mr. Kesha, who is asking us, what technology should I adopt in the next six months to increase my marketing revenue? Hello, Sanjay, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so Keshav, uh, you know, again, there are multiple things that can be done. Um, I'm a huge believer of uh, beginning with an end in mind. The start could definitely be uh, a technology which can help you with a lot of outbound and bit of inbound. Uh, but to give you a right answer, I think it needs a discussion. But if I was to talk about any retail company uh, uh, with, with you know, industry-specific challenges they face, my recommendation would be starting with a, somewhere like a campaign automation, then moving to uh, the the online side of it, which is around inbound uh, challenges to you know, to address some inbound challenges around personalization, uh, as well as um, the inbound challenge of lead scoring. Thanks, Nambi. Thanks, Sushan. So I think, you know, with this, we come to an end of a, a very insightful webinar that we had today. Uh, I would again like to extend from all of us here, thanks to Mr. Nambi Tharoda and to Mr. Sushan Krav for uh, being, you know, uh, so generous and sharing the, their knowledge with us. Uh, thank you all the participants uh, for joining us with this webinar and we really hope that today's learnings will help you embark on your AI journey uh, for your enterprise and your organization. So, till the time we may meet again, uh, keep reading ET Reading. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining.